Hello, and um, welcome to this second video in our Being Active Reconnect series. In the first video, we looked at connecting two resource manager mode Being Active together uh, using a Being Active Reconnect connection. In this video, we're going to look at connecting a classic mode Reconnect with a resource manager mode Reconnect. Now, if you haven't seen part one, if you haven't seen the first video in this series, then I suggest you take a look at that first, as it does build upon, uh, or sorry, we do build upon that video in this second video. So let's get started. Um, if you remember from the first video, we finished the video with two connected VNets, uh, RM Gateway VNet 1 and RM Gateway VNet 2. And we had uh, two, virtual, uh, two uh, machines, one in each virtual network, that could ping each other. Well, what I've done now is introduce a third network. This time it's a classic mode network. And we can see this if I switch to the classic portal. So, go to the classic portal. Uh, we have this network called DevNet, an address space of 192.1.0 with one subnet on there. And I've got deployed this classic network, a machine called DC1. So if we take a look at DC1, you can see we've got an IP config screen there. And you can see its IP address. And you can see I've already, already tried to ping 172.16.1.4, and that ping has failed. So this machine on uh, this classic VNet, I want to be able to connect to the machine uh, RM VM1 on, on the RM VNet. So we're going to start off by doing the uh, classic mode side first. So if I come out this uh, VM, and we're back to the classic portal. Now, everything we're about to do can be done through um, PowerShell. It can be done through by downloading the uh, network configuration file. But we can do it through the GUI, so, so why not? Now, the first thing I want to, to show you is on the... Uh, 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 network uh, screen itself under configure. Notice how there's no option for site to site uh, or VNet to VNet connectivity on this screen. So the first we need to do is come back to the network section and select local networks. Um, a bit like a routing table where traffic comes in and it needs to be uh, a talented decision needs to be made on where that traffic should go. Before we're allowed to create the VNet to VNet connections, we need to define what network we will connect into. And in classic mode, that's done with local networks. So if I add a local network here, and we're going to call this uh, RMVNet1. This is our connection to RMVNet1. Now, on RMVNet1, I've got a gateway. And we can see this if I go back to the portal. And we'll go back to the resource group. And we'll find uh, RMVNet1 in my resource group. So view all items. We've got RMVNet1 there. So select that. And if we scroll down, we can see RMVNet1 has got two connected devices. One of them is the virtual machine, and the other is the gateway with an IP address of 40.115.23.0. Now, we need to take a note of that, because that's the gateway that I need to send all traffic to to get to this uh, resource band arena. So if I go back to classic mode, we're saying to get to our MVNet1, send traffic to 40.115.23.0. Now, our MVNet1 has got an address space. And I know its address space is 172.16.0.0 slash 16. So what we do in this local network is saying that all traffic to this 172.16.0.0 network should be sent to 40.115.23.0, the gateway's IP address. So it takes a minute, it'll create that local network for me in classic mode. Again, we can do all this from PowerShell or by downloading the network configuration file. Now, once this is completed, if we go back to the virtual network, so back to uh, DevNet and configure, we now should now see a site to site connectivity option appearing. Now, although we're creating a VNet to VNet connection, the steps to create it are almost identical to creating a site to site link. If I choose connect to local network then, 
and make sure the RMV net one local network I just created is in the local network box. And what we should find is that a gateway subnet is created for me. This is the subnet to which I deploy my gateways. So if I save that, say yes. And again, that'll just take a minute to save uh, that connection. Now it's worth pointing out, we're not actually creating gateways at this point. Uh, what we're doing is creating the um, the gateway subnet uh, and, and the IP uh, um, rules. Once it's saved, which should take about 30 more seconds, we'll then start the process of creating a gateway on this classic mode side. Now, if you remember from our, our video yesterday, um, these gateways can take anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes to create. So we're going to start the process off here. We've got a few more steps that we can do through the new portal, and then uh, we'll have to pause the video and wait until the gateway is configured. So we'll just let this um, setting finish off. So that's actually updated. So what we should find now is we'll go back to the dashboard. We get this gateway representation. But you see there it says gateway is not created. So I need to create the gateway here. Now I used to remember we talked about uh, different types of gateway. And for classic mode gateways, we've got static routing or dynamic gateways. If you want to create a VNet to VNet connection or point to site connection, then it's got to be a, a static routing gateway that we sorry, a dynamic routing gateway that we create. So I'm going to select dynamic routing gateway. You want to create a dynamic gateway? Yes. Now this will take some time. And Mike is going to create this highly available gateway for me and assign me a public IP address uh, that I can use. Now while that's working away, and like I said, it could take 40, 45 minutes, if we go back to um, the uh, resource bench poll, there is an extra component that I'm going to require that I can create again through PowerShell or over here in the portal. So if I say new and say local network gateway, got local network gateway here. In a classic mode, we uh, we defined a, a network, a local network, the network that I want to route all traffic to. Well, it's the same thing really. But this is for resource manager mode. This will identify the classic mode VNet. So I can tell my resource manager gateway, just when it's sending traffic to that VNet, send it through the local gateway connection, send it through the classic mode gateway. Now you'll see I need some information in here. First of all, a name for the local gateway connection. I need an IP address of the local gateway, and then the address space. Now the address space I know now. That's the address space on my, my DevNet network, 192.1.0.24. What I don't know yet is the address of the gateway, because right now that gateway has been created, and then the public IP address will be created for me. So although we will have to create a local network gateway, I can't complete the configuration. I can add it to a resource group if you want. But I can't complete its configuration uh, until I get that gateway IP address. So at this point, I'm going to have to pause the video. Uh, when the gateway is created, we'll come back and we'll finish off uh, this connection. Okay, and we're back. Um, it took about, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes to create that gateway. Uh, but it's created the gateway now, so we can go back in and finish off our configuration. Remember, we'd started to create the local network gateway in the uh, new portal. And we can still see that configuration um, here. Um, so what we need to do is, look, well, first of all, I'll fill in a name. What we need to do is locate an IP address. So over here on the classic mode portal, we've got the gateway IP address now, 137.116.206.222. Uh, this is the IP address assigned to my classic mode gateway uh, from Microsoft. And that's the IP address we're going to use in the local gateway connection through the uh, standard portal uh, to connect to this classic mode VNet. So if we make a note of that, write that down. And now if I go back to the uh, standard portal, I can finish off the local network gateway connection. So uh, we've got the rest of the details filled in there, the name, the address space, all filled in, the resource groups all filled in. And now it's the IP address, uh, 137 116 206 
192.168.222. This is the IP address we're going to use to connect to the 192.168.1 network. I'm going to check to make sure that's valid. It is. Great. So, one last check of the details this DevNet local gateway. And we'll then we'll say create. Now that local network gateway is going to take just a minute or two to create. Um, the rest of the configuration we're actually going to do through PowerShell. Now a lot of this you can do through the GUI, but I thought we might as well take a look at PowerShell while we're here. And we're going to use the integrated scripting environment. Now I have both, well, I have the Azure PowerShell module installed. And when you install the Azure PowerShell module, it also installs the uh, modules for Redux Manager today. So with the local gateway connected, if we go to the ISC, I've got a few PowerShell commands uh, for us to have a look at here. Um, the first thing first, though, we need to connect to um, Azure's, uh, Azure subscription. So I'm going to use the add Azure account and add Azure RM account command lets to connect me to the classic mode and the resource manager mode um, subscriptions. So I'll run each one of these in turn, providing my login details. If I'm afraid I'm going to have to blank out for you guys. Um, if you do want to contact me, feel free to add comments in the comment section. About five minutes username and password for my uh, Azure connection first, and then for the resource manager connection. Now, uh, in the resource manager mode, what I've found is if you've got multiple subscriptions, you're also going to have to use this select Azure RM subscription command. So, uh, to choose which subscription you want to work with. But before that, we'll use the add Azure RM account. I'll provide my uh, details again. Just provide my password. So that connects me now. And then, like I said, I'm going to, have to use the select Azure I'm subscription command look to connect me to the correct subscription because I've got multiple subscriptions. Once that's created, we need to create two variables. One variable is going to target the local network gateway that we just created in the portal. The second is going to target ARM gateway one. Now, if you remember from our first video, ARM gateway one is connecting to one is connected to one of my resource manager virtual networks. I'm going to use these variables later on in, in PowerShell to create a connection between the uh, IAM gateway and my classic mode network. So $VNet01 gateway equals and we just get Azure local network gateway command there and we'll just run that. Yeah, run the variable to make sure we've, we've cap we have captured details. And I've used the name of the, network, the, the local network gateway and the resource group within. And the second variable for um, our uh, resource manager gateway. Now, with both these variables created, we use the new Azure RM virtual network gateway connection commander. This will create a connection between our classic and resource manager mode VNets. We have to give it a, a name, we have to give it a location. And then we use two variables in the two properties. The first one being the minus virtual network gateway one, and then the minus local network gateway two, making sure they use the appropriate variables there. Now, one thing to know is connection type. Um, although we're creating a VNet to VNet connection, when you create a connection from classic mode VNet to RM VNet, the actual connection type we configure is IPsec. That's what you configure on the RM side, not VNet to VNet. If you VNet to VNet, it won't work. So it's treating this almost like a um, site site link. The other thing is here, we're using a shared key for authentication. So we need to make sure the shared keys match. So if I'm using ABC123 on my new Azure virtual network gateway connection, I've also got to use that on the classic mode side. So there you see, we've run that command. Now this will take a minute just to create that connection for me. After which we'll run line 19 that adds the same key to the classic there you go, we've got a gateway uh, connection created now. And now line 19, they'll have the same shared key on the classic uh, side. Here we've identified the uh, VNet, DevNet, and the local network site, RM VNet 1, which we created previously. So run line 19. Again, this is 30 seconds a minute just to finish off. 
Uh, we will be adding more network videos uh, to the site in the coming weeks and months. Uh, we're going to have videos to do with network security groups, uh, load balancing. If there's anything else you can think of that you would like us to chat about on this channel, please let us know. Also, if you like the content of these videos, uh, please, please feel free to subscribe. And there, don't you saw, but that quick flash, and that's a shared key uh, created. Um, we did pause the video, by the way, during both of those. So if we go back to Classic Portal, we can see that the Classic Portal is connected. And if we go back to the new portal, we'll see the gateway connection that we just created in PowerShell. That will be in our resource group. And we should be able to see uh, that that's also connected um, as well. So we find the DevNet local gateway connection. And scroll across the connections and we'll see that's connected for us. Scroll back, we'll also see the address space that it's using to make that connection. So the final thing to do is test connectivity. So if we go to DC1 first uh, and see if that can ping the virtual machine on the resource manager VM virtual network side. So there we go. Perfect. So that can now ping 172.16.1.4. Although we don't need to. If we go to that machine and try to ping back. Happy days. Make sure the firewall's turned off uh, if you want to do these pings, or at least you've got the appropriate firewall rules in place. That's it. Thank you.